Welcome back. You've been to Idaho um, to learn about developmental care. Um, first of all, though, there were initially two of you going, and there seems to be three of you. How did that? How did that come about? Um, we decided that it'd be more beneficial if um, three of us went to America. So when we got back, there were more of us to implement it and uh, to sort of teach and support others. So we, I had to apply. I had to write a letter to apply and incorporate the six C's um, and then that was narrowed down to a second letter and then I had to have an interview with the senior matron of education. We went to look at developmental care and how it's implemented in America. Um, there are some hospitals in Britain that are starting to practice it already so we did an overnight visit to Bristol to look how it's implemented in Bristol um, which gave us some guidance as to how we wanted to move forward with it when we got to America um, specifically how they strategies they've used to implement it on the unit over there and getting other members of staff on board. When we talk about developmental care it was specifically something called uh, NICAP. Yeah NICAP stands for Newborn Individ Individualised Developmental Care Assessment Programme so the philosophy behind NICAP, it look, puts parents and the baby at the centre of all the care and then you look at an individualised programme, look at how the baby reacts, how the baby com communicates with the nurses, with the doctors, with their family and then we provide care to, according to that and to assist with their development. The brain development, obviously babies are born prematurely and in the last trimester of pregnancy the, the brain develops by about 400%. So in the womb they're in a, a nice, dark, quiet environment, um, protected, and then they're born, they're in a neonatal unit, they're having procedures um, done, they're having there's wires, there's cannulas, there's people touching them, they're very noisy, bright units. Um, so they look at strategies in which we can make the, the environment better for them and more womb-like, for want of a better expression. And what, what kind of things did you learn over there? What was what was your general experience? I think probably, for me personally, one of the most memorable experiences was uh, when we were actually watching an observation of a baby and standing back from the care that we normally give and looking at, at the signs that the baby gives us. And although I've been in neonates for 14 years, it was like someone had turned a light on for me and, and as to what we should be watching for and experiencing with that baby's size that they're giving us um, and we, we were able to watch three or four different observational experiences whilst we were there that I think had a, probably had a big impact on mm. all of us yeah. from what we saw. I think for me going over to America and obviously it's private healthcare we did sort of think that there were going to be lots of um, interventions and, and props and things that were there to support the baby to make it, it better developmental care wise so we weren't too sure what we'd be faced financially over that we needed to bring back to Chesterfield, but it became quite apparent that so much could be done on a really little budget or even free um, from seeing what they did over there, noise-wise, lighting, positioning. So we've brought a lot of that back to Chesterfield and obviously trying to get that across to us other colleagues as well, that it doesn't need to be a, a really expensive hospital with lots of facilities and things to be able to achieve that. We looked at what we do in Chesterfield that we do really, really well and there's loads of things that America are doing exactly the same as what we're doing. Um, it's just kind of little things that they do in a different way. Um, so we've sort of set some short-term goals that we're going to try and um, support as colleagues with and then some long-term goals to sort of get everybody involved with it, the multidisciplinary team and things. Some of the things we've all sort of implemented within a few days of coming back to work have been um, nests that we pro provide barriers around the baby so when they stretch out they always like to be able to feel a barrier so that, that helps them to flex and feel to be in a comfortable position. Um, another intervention is swaddle bathing um, and we've noticed really positive results from that where the baby go is actually wrapped in a sheet before it goes into the water and the difference Visually is immediate. Normally, a baby's screaming and quite distressed through a bath, and then is quite tired and doesn't want to feed afterwards. Whereas the swaddle baths, we've not seen one baby cry yet, mm -hmm. <laughs> and everybody, both parents, might be a bit sceptical, but love it as soon as the baby's had one. And the same with staff; the reaction has been immediate, and that is one of the things we watched in America, and all three of us 
thought it was a really fantastic, yeah, fantastic thing to see. Yeah. The um, people that we visited in America were both professors in their own right of NIDCAP, so we felt very honoured that they'd given us that time and experience to spend time with them because um, they both demonstrated to us strat strategies that we could utilise over here to help us change the practices over here into in form of NIDCAP. So um, since we've come back, we've introduced something called Whisper Wednesday, where obviously the lawyers' levels are much reduced on a Wednesday, and the impact of that being on staff, that they, they see significant changes in the baby's behaviour, but also stress levels for themselves are significantly reduced. And following that, we've then introduced Silent Saturday with a long-term plan that over the period of the week will increase the, the quiet environment of the unit. It's been fantastic, yeah, a brilliant yeah. experience and yeah. we feel very lucky to have, very honoured to have undertaken it.